No, I had this thought. I think it's I think it's an overused phrase to say like, well, I have something on my heart. I mean, not that that isn't real or isn't true, but I think people say that a lot. But something, what my process is, is things bounce around in my brain for a little while and I kind of chew on them. And then I think, okay, there's something to this. Maybe I just jot it down. And so that what I'm gonna talk to you about today came out of one of those thoughts, kind of like driving in the car you know, and thought bounces around in your brain and you try to kick it out and you just can't and you just kind of chew on it for a while. And then I started thinking about the seniors and I started thinking about, this is the time of year where everybody gives you advice or they write nice things in cards and they give you money, right? Which is nice and they come over to your house for, you know, hot dogs and water slides and everything else. And it's, it's both fantastic and scary at the same time. There's a lot of things on the horizon. There's a lot of big changes on the horizon. There's a lot of unknowns. There's things you probably haven't thought about yet, like the fact that you're about to live in four different places in four years probably. Uh, you're gonna move from dorm to apartment to apartment to roommates to roommates to house maybe and stuff like that. Uh, on campus to off campus and back again. So it's a big transition. And why I thought about the seniors is because everybody always tells you advice that they think that you would want to hear or they would think that would be encouraging and that's not really how I roll. <laughs> I'm going to tell you advice that you probably need to hear uh, and advice that took me a long time to figure out myself. And so to get really philosophical, I think a lot of people ask the wrong questions a lot of times and so people say like, what should I pursue? Should I pursue my passion? Should I pursue something that makes me happy? How do I know if this is the person to marry? How do I know if I should take this job? And it's like, what's the meaning of life? And if you're emotionally and mentally well, it's hard to imagine what it's like to not have a purpose, to be nihilistic. But if you've ever suffered from any kind of depression at all, or seen it firsthand, it, it's a beast. And the thing about something like depression, and not even just in a clinical sense, but even just like purposelessness. That's a lot of syllables. Uh, not having a purpose. What's interesting about that, or what's difficult about that, is it's a dark, dark, dark place. Your mind has a lot more control than you think it does. Your mind creates reality into existence. And if you have a purpose and meaning, something to orient yourself towards, you're in a good place. If you don't have something to orient yourself towards, it gets really dark really quickly. And you're like, wow, this is a huge bummer for, <laughs> this is not a send me off to college speech. And it's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm serious though. I'm serious, think about this, whether you're a senior or not. You can get it wrong and everything seems exciting and, and the future is on the horizon and it's like oh well, it's gonna be so fun and we're gonna rush this fraternity or sorority and we're gonna go to football games we're gonna go to campus I'm gonna get to study classes I'm maybe get to play you know but you're not thinking about the dark times you're not thinking about when you're lonely you're not thinking about when you have an identity crisis you're not thinking about when you have a crisis of conscience or when you are trying to decide if you should change your major or not everything that you've wanted to do now becomes pointless and useless and you're like, I think I gotta go in another direction or you're at odds with your parents, you're going to be on your own making your own decisions. And people will give you bad advice, not on purpose, but because they just don't know it's good advice or it's bad advice. And they're gonna say things like, well, follow your passions. And that's stupid advice. Don't follow your passions, that's idiotic. And they're gonna say like, do what makes you happy. That's dumb. How do you even know what makes you happy? Like donuts make you happy. Don't do what makes you happy. That's ridiculous. And it's like, well, then what is the point? Well, I tried to think of all the different words, of all the things that give life meaning, that give life value. And it's like, okay, is this make sense philosophically and is it biblical? That's like the two things that you vet it through. It's like, okay, I have a thought and it makes sense in a psychological sense or a philosophical sense, but does it make sense biblically? And this is what I came up with. I came up with two things. And I somehow imagine them like an axis. So we're gonna imagine the axis here. So where you orient yourself in two criteria. These are the two things that you need to think about that will make the purpose of your life stay aligned. 
okay? And one of those is you have to have a reason. You have to have a why. You have to have something to aim at. And we're going to call that one the vertical line, and that's purpose. Your life has value. Your life has meaning if you have a purpose. And that goes hand in hand with something else. I thought about other, other words and other terms, and, I, and this is what I came up with. The other one I'm going to come up with is will. So the will is going to go on the other axis, the horizontal axis there. And, and let's unpack this metaphor for a couple minutes. If you're not aimed at the purpose of your life, you're going to be veering off in the wrong direction. So what you think about is not, oh, is this what God wants me to be doing? Maybe, maybe not. But maybe that's not even the right question. It's like, is the situation that I'm currently in taking me towards my purpose or not? And the other thing you have to think about is this, and this doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's, it's will. And, and will is a broad term. The first thing I thought of was responsibility. That's not a popular term. But believe it or not, your life cannot be fulfilling unless you have responsibility. Unless you have, unless you have sacrifice, unless you have um, servitude towards something else bigger than yourself. So there's the purpose above you, because believe me, sometimes your life can get dark. And even if it doesn't, you can become really narcissistic really quickly. And so if the whole purpose of your life is about you, or me, for my case, it's not good. And here's the thing, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a few things and I don't want you to take this as a personal attack because I think it's, it, it's culture-wide, but it explains a lot. All right? This is more to explain something than to attack you, but I want you, these are things worth thinking about. We've created a culture in our society where you have become the protagonist of your own story. And it's like, what's so important and awesome about you? Look at the food that you're eating, put it on Instagram. Look at what, maybe I don't want to go to that school. Maybe I don't want to play that position. Maybe this doesn't make me happy. Maybe this relationship is boring to me. Maybe I don't want, it's like, so? That's the alignment of having a purpose beyond yourself, which is to know your design. We're gonna unpack that in a minute. And you can't know your design unless you know the person that designed you, because you can try to find purpose outside of the way that you are wired and it will not work. You can't find it in stuff. You can't find it in money. You can't find it in fame. You can't find it in followers. And you know that. You hear that all the time. But it's worth repeating. Your life has to be oriented to something beyond you. It can't just be about you. And it's like, well, what if I don't want to marry that person? Okay, fair enough. I'm not saying just marry somebody you don't love. But if the, the, if you're, the lens with which you are looking is like, is this fulfilling to me? Does this make me happy? Does this make... Think about this. Think about why having children, and I know this is a long way on the horizon for you, but think about why having children, because you are you have parents, so think about your parents' standpoint if it's too far away to think about you having kids, which makes sense. Being a parent is nothing but sacrifice, servitude, selflessness, right? Would you agree? Is that, is that a fair statement? So would you say that that's a rewarding experience for your parents? Think about where you are. Think about what they've done to get you here, the practices they've got you to, the money they've spent on you, and all of your interests, staying up with you at night, when you're sick, helping you do projects, getting you from point A to point B, buying you clothing, funding your lifestyle, providing you with food and clothes and cars and the support and their goal is, I'll happily pour into somebody else because it gives me value. And your goal is, it's unfair. Why won't she let me do this? Why won't he? And you do the same thing to your coaches, because I did when I was a teenager. If you want to know why programs are not successful, it's selfishness. That's literally the reason. Everything that goes into failure goes into a me first attitude. If you are a member of a unit and you have a role in a unit, that determines how far the unit is gonna go. And it doesn't matter if it's sports or if it's drama, it doesn't matter if it's your job, and it doesn't matter if it's your family, if it's your friendships, your roommates, or your marriage. If you're in it for you, you will not be successful. That is not a theory. 
It's a fact. If you make your life about yourself, you will never, ever, ever be happy. Pursue happiness and you will not find it. I promise you. So bet all your money away. Join whatever organization you want. It will not fulfill you. I'm telling you this. Talk to the richest people you know. You have to have a purpose beyond yourself. It has to be something to orient your life towards. See, when you go to college next year, if you're a senior, there's a lot of opportunity to pour into yourself. What do I want to do? Where do I want to go? What organization do I want to join? And think about like, okay, well, if I have the best time tonight, why think about tomorrow? And it's like, well, because you're going to have to deal with you tomorrow. And there's a lot of tonights and a lot of tomorrow. So if your whole life becomes a series of, well, get as drunk as you can, because what does it matter? I don't have any classes until noon. It's like, what does it hurt? In the short term, nothing. In the long term, it's perpetuating everything that's wrong with society. And that's me, 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 me. The thing that makes a lot of males, I'm speaking from the standpoint of being a male, I can't speak for being a woman, but my wife could. The thing that helps a lot of males grow up is responsibility. And it's not that they're unwillingly, you know, like arrested and sentenced to a life of of marriage and children. It rescues us from our hedonistic nihilism. That's what it does. It's like, what did children do for you? Why did God give us that image in the Bible? Because that's the only way you can understand how to love something so much that you will willingly continue to beat your head against the wall for a stubborn idiot that won't listen to you even though you know the answer. <laughs> that's what parenthood is. That's why God constantly in the Bible, the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father, painting a picture in human terms that we can understand. We're the stubborn children who won't listen to the person who literally designed the entire universe. I got it. I know what I'm doing. Do you? Do you? Okay. That's literally the metaphor for every relationship in the world. And that's the point, the purpose. And, it's, and, and think about how Jesus described himself. I came not to serve, but to what? Or I came not to be served, but to... I gave you the answer. To serve. A servant's attitude. He uses language like, deny yourself, take up your cross. That's a metaphor. It's not literal, but what he means is that everybody has a burden of responsibility to bear. Responsibility is not an insignificant thing. If you have people who depend on you, or someone or something that depends on you, then you can't just go do what you want all the time. So if you want to be nihilistic, if you want to have nothing to live for, if you want to have no meaning in your life, then cut ties with every responsibility that you can have, and then it won't matter what you do. Who cares if you show up at work? Because no one depends on you. Who cares if you go to class? Because you're the only one who it affects if you fail. Now that's the point, okay? It sounds harsh, but I want you to understand the rich life that is things beyond yourself. Things beyond yourself. I'm not saying you don't ever get to do what you want. That's not the point. I'm talking in a bigger macro scale here. I'm talking your life has to be oriented towards a purpose. And your purpose is different than your position. Nathan Pooley talked about that when he was here a couple months ago. Your purpose is different than your position. And you're like, oh, I'm a student right now. This is where God has me. Yes, that's your position. But your purpose, your, that's your role. It's not your goal. Your purpose is not to be a student. You have a design. You, you ha you've been gifted a certain way. God created you on purpose, for a purpose, and it wasn't to be as comfortable and happy as you can all the time. God didn't put you here in the 21st century in America so that you could be as comfortable as you could be. No trauma, no famine, no pestilence, no global economic collapse, no major uh, pandemic. Be as happy as you can and buy as much as you want. There's a parable that Jesus tells about that's called the prodigal son. You can look it up. The point is this. If you don't orient your life to something that's greater than you, it will not have me. You have to have a purpose to aim at. And here's why. Because when times are good, you can worship at the idol of yourself. Narcissism. You become your own idol. But when times are bad and you can't solve your problems, now what? Uh-oh. That's when people turn to higher powers when they hit rock bottom. See, your circumstances absolutely will change. Times are good, 
then they're not. You go through financial troubles, you go through health problems, your family gets sick, your parents lose their job, maybe you lose your job, you get an academic probation in college, you get in trouble at school, maybe you get kicked off of a team, maybe you lose your scholarship, X, Y, or Z, maybe your parents get divorced, I don't know what's on the horizon for you, I don't. But if your security is in the things staying the same in this world, I got news for you. Trauma is absolutely coming for you. And I don't tell you that to scare you. Because I say that often if you're in my class. I tell you that to prepare yourself to look beyond your own circumstances. Your life is not about your circumstances. Your life is about having a meaning beyond yourself. See, if your purpose is, what does God want me to do? then it doesn't matter what happens in my life. It's not like it isn't tough. It's not like it isn't sad. It's not like it isn't hard. No, hardship, right? Iron sharpens iron. The hotter the fire, the harder the steel, right? That's the other thing that kills organizations. You got selfishness and softness. Those are the two worst things that you can have in an organization. You have to be tough, battle-tested, and you have to be willing. So purpose is the goal of your life. How did God design me? What does he want for my life? And that brings us to the second axis here, which is will. And the will is the desire and the availability. The li in literal terms, just the willingness. If you say, okay, God, I understand. I'm getting it wrong. That's what the prodigal son came to the conclusion. Uh-oh. Now what? I'm listening. You have my attention. Well, that's the willingness part. So if you look at it like a horizontal axis, the where these two things meet... Having a purpose beyond myself, which is your design, the creator who created you. That's called sanctification, by the way, if you want to use Bible terms and, and religious terms. It's the process of becoming closer into the being that you're supposed to be. And when you get closer aligned with how you're designed, just like a plant that lives in an ecosystem, if you have the perfect biodiversity and all the, the right elements that are in place, it will thrive. But if the environment is not right, something is lacking and missing, it might still grow, but it won't thrive. You're the same way. You're designed to be in harmony with God's intention for you. And you don't have to believe me. You can find out the hard way for yourself, but you don't have to. So when you get out of alignment with your purpose, it's not going to end well for you. And you know that, but you're excited to explore the world, and you're going to be in your 20s, and I get it. There's some self-exploration that happens in college, but I'm just telling you, you need to be thinking about this. You need to keep this in your mind. Things aren't always going to go well. And life isn't just about frat parties and football games. You have to have a purpose for your life that gives it meaning. Because meaning is better than happiness. See, we think of happiness as uh, satisfaction. That's one type of positive emotion, being comfortable, being satisfied. Like, yeah, yeah, I wanted that thing and I got it. Ah, until it goes away. Now, actually, what the best positive emotion, the thing that motivates people the most, we know it is dopamine, that's the anticipation of something, which implies hope. Think about it this way. This is a weird thing, but the fact that I willingly walk across this rug tells me that I have the hope, in literal terms, that I can get there. See, there's a connection between positive emotion and achieving something. Because why get up off the couch if it's not going to matter anyway? That's hopelessness. That's what deep depression looks like. That's what suicidal ideation looks like. That's nothing I do will change anything in my life. Why bother? That's a dangerous, dangerous place to be. So you try you and you try you and you try you and you worship at the altar of you and everything in your life is all about what you want and your desires and this is not fair and nobody's giving me what you want. We want a ceremony for everything and a pat on the back for everything. And it's like, no, just make your life about something bigger than you. Your parents, if we interviewed them, would not say, oh yeah, no, I regret having her every day of my life. I really wish we had more time to go out on the boat. Now, when they were 20, they might have said, oh, I don't want to have kids because I can't go out on a boat as much. And that's valid, but they don't regret it. You know why? Because having a purpose beyond yourself is far better than doing what you want to do all the time. So it's not just having something bigger than you. It's the willpower to be responsible. Because when you have responsibilities, people depend on you. That's the great thing about being a leader. If you're in an organization and people count on you, you're like, it's pressure. And it's like, it's not. It's people depending on you. It means you have a role and you have value in this organization. Right? So let's wrap it up like this. Responsibility is not a bad thing, people. Sacrifice is not a bad thing. 
willpower is not a bad thing. But to sacrifice for something, to have willpower, to be responsible, you have to know what you're aiming at. So just a simple illustration, when you leave here and go wherever you go, just keep this in mind. And it's not ironic, it looks kind of like a cross. It's the intersection between a purpose in my life that's greater than myself, and you can read about that in Man's Search for Meaning if you want to read this book. Happiness is not to be pursued. It's a byproduct of a life well lived. So the intersection of something greater than myself and the willpower to be responsible and self-sacrificing, that's where your life will flourish. It'll thrive. So I am excited for you. It's not like I want to just give you something dark because it sounds heavy, and it is heavy, but I hope it's not dark. I'm telling you right now, you can have a great experience in college if you're a senior or next year if you're not a senior, but you cannot get this out of alignment because things will go wrong at some point, maybe not immediately, and when they do, if the whole purpose and value of your life is what makes you happy, well, now all of a sudden it's out of your control, and what do you do? And then in literal terms... Your life has no meaning anymore. Because everything that you did was centered around making yourself happy. Well, I eat this and drink this and smoke this and do this and be with these people and whatever, and sex and all this. Why? Because it makes me happy. It feels good. Why would something that be bad feel good? Why do I desire to do it? Well, because it never ends. That's a cycle. It never ends. So something to orient yourself that's bigger than you. And then that combines with the willpower, the self-discipline, the self-control to actually sacrifice for yourself. Those are the two things, right? It's, it's will, responsibility, sacrifice, and purpose. They align, right? Let's pray real quick and I'll get you out of here.